What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time since I've been on YouTube, but I've got a little project to take care of this morning. Should be kind of fun. Thought I'd take you guys along. We're gonna run a couple errands first and then we'll get into it. All right, so we are pulling up to our first errand of the day here. Uh, we're going to Best Buy. Uh, I bought a new tripod for my phone here, which is what I'm doing all my recording on at like five o'clock this morning. And uh, we're gonna pull up, get some contactless pickup going on and I'll pick you guys up right up. Success, got a new tripod for you guys. Hopefully I can get some decent shots with it. And uh, let's go knock out Aaron number two and get to work. Pulling up to our second, but arguably more important errand this morning. Hi there, can I just get a large Dunkachino, please? Of course, anything else for you? That's it. We'll have it at the window, thank you. Thank you. All right. Got my uh, Saturday and Sunday morning ritual Dunkachino. We'll pick this up, head to the shop, and I'll tell you guys what we're doing. Ah, delicious. I'm liking this tripod thing. It's much less awkward. So a couple days ago, I got the chainsaw out and decided to cut down a uh, tree that was between my garage and my house uh, for a couple reasons. One, it was a box elder maple that was kind of a junk tree and I didn't trust it that close to the house. And two, I want to pour concrete there eventually. So I went ahead and cut it down and uh, my buddy uh, Joey came over and brought his tractor and uh, we ripped it out of the ground, ripped the stump out of the ground. And uh, I'll put some clips in right here for you guys to watch that. power back on the garage so as you saw there the uh, power to the garage was basically running right through the root ball of that tree and uh, aside from uh, building myself my own uh, air spade and digging all the roots out and uh, and fishing that power out uh, from between the roots uh, it just wasn't worth it so I just decided to rip it out and uh, we cut through it obviously and we'll replace it. It's not even up to code, so we can make some improvements while we're uh, doing that and get it up to code. So that's not on today's agenda though. What we do need to do today is I need to fill in part of that hole uh, and get it nice and packed down where I don't have a big mess in my yard. Um, and to do that, I needed a tamper to you know tamp the dirt down and get her packed down a little bit. So I went to Lowe's and they wanted $30 for their tamper that uh, really didn't seem like uh, anything special. I mean, just a piece of quarter inch plate, and some probably robotic welds and you know, I, it just did not seem worth 30 bucks to me. That's an entire uh, Christmas present for one of my family members. So we saved the 30 bucks and today me and you are gonna make one. So let's get to the shop and we'll get started. All right, so made it to the shop and uh, we're ready to get started. First thing that uh, we need to do for this tamper is make a handle for it. And uh, on the one at Lowe's that they were selling, they just had like a little styrofoam pad around where you would put your hands. And that's no good for anybody because that's just going to break down over time and then you're just left with a piece of pipe. So uh, I want to do one better and knurl it on the lathe. So I found this uh, piece of uh, schedule 41 inch black pipe. It's 49 inches long. I was gonna make, make the handle 48 inches long So we're just gonna go with it. I'm not even gonna cut it off. So let's get this thing checked up in the lathe and uh, Start knurling. You know, I never really knew what the uh, limit was on spindle insertion on this lathe, but clearly That fits a one inch piece of pipe real nice Now my first problem here is gonna be that I need to support the end with that uh, live center there. And that's gonna be kind of difficult and a piece of pipe. So I'm gonna square the end of this piece of pipe off and uh, take a measurement. And then we're gonna make a bushing real quick that I can put a center in and we'll have some support.
where the end off here. Looks like 1.17 is what we need to make a bushing to. It's just a flange on it. Let's knock this out. And let's go find a little piece of material we can make a bushing out of. Go over to the steel rack and that looks about perfect. What do you say? Let's make a bushing out of that. Chucked up here. Leave just a little more sticking out. And we'll face it. Turn it to size. And we'll have ourselves a bushing. Ooh, there's a lot of run out in that. We don't care. Take a decent heavy cut. Should be at least 40 thou. Still an interrupted cut though, so. All right, I'll bring you back when we're down to size. All right, slight change of plans. I was turning this thing down and I was thinking about it, and the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get this thing done in a hurry, and uh, by doing that, I'm cutting corners, and I'm, I'm just gonna not be satisfied with the result if, uh, if I don't get a good result because I cut those corners. So, we chucked, those, we chucked the pipe back up in the lathe here. I'm gonna stick a small boring bar in there and uh, cut that to a good, number that is actually concentric and then i'll put this back in the lathe turn it to what we actually need that way i'll have a good solid fit and uh, it won't be able to move around and hopefully that will mm, let me end up with a good result on my knurling all right my boring bar selection uh, in this size is pretty pretty poor uh that's things kind of a piece of junk but We'll see if we can make it work and uh, get a decent number. So I'll bring you guys back when we're uh, when we're there. All right. That's much better. Now I have a nice round hole that I can uh, make a bushing to fit and it'll be nice and concentric and won't move around on me. And it looks like the number I'm going for is 1 point. Actually, it looks like 1.95. Yeah, 1.95. So that's the number I'm gonna go to and uh, we'll put our bushing back in and start making chips again. And there we have it. The bushing is turned to size. 
Uh, if I had a good parting tool, I would have just parted it off and flipped it around, but I don't. So we're gonna take it over to the chop saw. Look at that. Fits beautifully. So let's take this over to the chop saw. I'll cut it off somewhere around right there. And uh, we'll flip it over, check it up in the lathe and put a center in it. All right, got that chopped off in the chop saw. It's a little warm. And uh, let me get her checked back up in the lathe and we'll start turning. All right. Slip the lathe on. Touch off. Bring it back. Give it just a hair more. And we'll make a pass. Get that faced off square and we'll put a center in it. All right, we got it faced off. Bring our center drill in. And we'll give it a nice center. As you can tell, I'm not using any uh, lubricant. I like to use as little lubricant as possible. It keeps things much cleaner. Go. Back that out. And that is one bushing complete. Let me get my uh, live center back in the tailstock and uh, we'll put her pipe in. All right. Shove our pipe on through here. Jaws up some more. There went our bushing. And I'm looking for about 10 inches of knurling. So let's go right about there. Tighten our jaws up a little. Grab our bushing that fell down somewhere. There it is. Slide that in our piece of pipe. That fits beautifully. Super happy about that. Pick up our center. And tighten the chuck down. And just like that, we're ready to do some knurling. All right, let me get uh, the tooling changed over and I'll bring you back. All right, so I got her marked off where I want my knurling to be. And we're gonna bring our tool over. Now this is my first time knurling anything. So uh, maybe we'll both learn something here. And I'm gonna slow the, I'm gonna slow my blade down a little bit. And we'll touch off. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I want to go a little deeper. That might be all I can get. So, speed her back up and engage. And just like that, we are knurling. All right, and there we have it, the finished product. It's not perfect, but uh, not bad for my first time. Probably would have been a little bit better if I had uh, 
turn to the shaft first, but that's definitely gonna work for what I'm doing. All right, there's step one of this tamper build complete. Got the handle ready to go. That knurling feels great in your uh, hands when you've got gloves on. It really grabs a hold of your gloves and uh, is not gonna let it slip out. So let's find some scrap steel, fire up the plasma table, and uh, cut out the rest of the parts we need. All right, so unfortunately I couldn't find any scrap steel. All I could find was some brand new stuff, uh, which means I'm gonna have to pay for it, but you know, that's the way it goes. That piece of steel right there will only be a few dollars. So uh, let's go ahead and get a macro shape uh, set up in the computer and uh, we'll cut us out a square. So I want a uh, macro with some radius corners. Uh, we're going for a 10 by 10 tamper and I'll put a uh, eighth inch radius on the corners looks good send to cutting and we are cutting some three eighths inch mild steel steel 65 amp tip All those settings look good. We'll hit okay. Here we go. And there we have it. Four good looking gussets. So let me get you guys set back up on the tripod. I'll tack them up and then we're going to weld this sucker out.
All right. I'm going to switch over to dual shield now and uh, we'll get this sucker welded out. And there we have it, one finished tamper. A lot of you are probably gonna say, you should've wrapped your corners. Eh, wasn't worth my time on this. <laughs> I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and I'll bring you back in just a second. Well, there it is. One finished tamper with a knurled handle. I'm probably the most happy about that. That feels fantastic. I'm so glad I did that. Wells look good. Oh yeah. That ought to last the rest of my life. Now I just gotta decide if I wanna paint it or not. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for me today. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, it's kind of nice to be making videos again. I definitely forgot how much uh, work it takes setting up the camera for every shot. But uh, anyways, y'all have a good one. Be good to each other.